Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Stepping Down Ceremony and Stepping Into Founding Dharma Teacher position for Berkeley Zen Center Abbot, Akuryu Sojin Mel Weitzman. My name is Carol Paul, and I am the Berkeley Zen Center Co-Zendo Manager. I want to mention a few things before the ceremony begins. If you did not see the ceremony program that was posted, I'll briefly summarize the different parts of the ceremony. At the beginning, Sojin Roshi leads the procession to altars at Berkeley Zen Center, offering incense or flowers and bows at each altar. He then returns to the Berkeley Zen, he then returns the Berkeley Zen Center seal to BCC's board president, who in turn offers him the position of founding Dharma teacher. Proceeding to the Zendo, Sojin Roshi will offer flowers and bows to Suzuki Roshi's altar, and then proceeds to the main altar where he also bows and makes an offering. He makes a statement at the main altar and then goes to his seat and makes a statement to the assembly. Invited teachers will offer expressions of support and gratitude. At that time, I will introduce each of the invited speakers. Sojin Roshi then departs. The ceremony program is also posted on the BCC website for your reference. As was noted in the invitations and announcements for this stepping down ceremony, Hosan Alan Sanaki will be installed as the new abbot of Berkeley Zen Center in a mountain seat ceremony later this year. And we will be sure to let you know that date. For this Zoom meeting, everyone in attendance is muted other than the invited speakers and the chat function is closed. If you would like to convey your own appreciation and good wishes to Sojin Roshi, at the end of the ceremony, we will post a slide that has his mailing as well as his email address. We will begin shortly. Thank you. 
<clears throat> I want to welcome everyone. Thank you all for coming, uh, celebrating this uh, wonderful event. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to wipe the slate clean. So, um, I want to uh, apologize for all my transgressions, for all my stupidities, um, uh, for anyone that I hurt in one way or another, whether I know about it or not. Um, and uh, to let you know that even though I've been sometimes kind of mean to peop people, uh, I don't say I don't mean it, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I do want to uh, uh, I will try harder in the future. History is um, intertwined with the uh, history of San Francisco Zen Center. Uh, right now, I'm this is my second stepping down. <laughs> um, 1988, I, beca I became co-abbot of San Francisco Zen Center at the same time that I was abbot of uh, Berkeley Center, then Center. Um, uh, and I've served uh, nine years as abbot of, of uh, co-abbot of, of San Francisco Zen Center. So uh, at that time, I was full of uh, pep and vinegar, <laughs> and um, uh, I, I, I was abbot of Berkeley, co-abbot of San Francisco, and my, uh, my circuit was Tassajara, San Francisco, Green, Lunch, Green Gulch, Berkeley, and um, uh, home. So I don't know how I did that, but I somehow I managed. And all that time, my son Daniel was born and uh, grew up in this milieu. And Liz, my wife, if I said I would like to do something, she always said, okay. Uh, <clears throat> she uh, never favored her own well-being. Uh, to my uh, needs to do what I needed to do. So I just felt free, you know. But it was really hard on him. Hard on Daniel, hard on... Uh, uh, <clears throat> our dog. <laughs> oh, Chula was a great dog. So there was my family coasting along. Daniel didn't like it so much. I know that. I remember one time he said, wrote me a note. He said, Daddy, don't go away yet. 
So I had to balance all of these factors, all of these factors together to, in order to do everything I needed to do. But, you know, I never worried about Zen Center. When I was at Bed Zen Center, I never worried about Zen I just felt things are going along. If, if something, uh, if we need to do something, we'll do it. If there's a problem, we'll take care of it. So that's always been my attitude. I've never worried about anything. <laughs> it was a little stupid, but... Um, and in Berkeley, the, Ber uh, the Berkeley Zendo would let me go. I'd say, I, I have to go to Tassajara now for three months. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, and, and so the Zen, my feeling was the Zendo, the, the practice would take care of itself. I just had that much trust, always had that much trust and confidence that the practice would just maintain itself, and it always has. Um, so I, I really want to apologize for all the inconveniences. Nobody said there was any, but there was. Uh, and so I just felt that the Sangha uh, was always promoting me and giving, giving me whatever I wanted. If I, I um, in, the, in the beginning, the Sangha gave me $150 a month, Liz and I, $150 a month to live on and room and board. So I felt fine with that. Later on, I said, we need more money. <laughs> <laughs> but the Sangha always knew when they felt that I needed more money. Give me a raise. OK. When I, when I was at uh, Abbott in San Francisco, um, I had a, a, a salary from Berkeley, but I, they, and so San Francisco, no, Berkeley offered me more salary. And I said, as long as I'm sharing myself with San Francisco, um, I, it, it doesn't seem fair to, uh, um, for, for Berkeley to give me any more money. So, I think my, my goal, if I have one, or one of my goals, is to create harmony. So that's, I, I don't have to try to do that. I would say, so I've always tried to do that, but actually I don't have to do that. Don't have to try, it's just there. So, I'm not always harmonious with everyone. If you got a problem, I'll tell you about it. But uh, basically, somebody knocks the door on the door. I remember when I was at a Zen Center, and I said, um, uh, I will never be bothered by anybody knocking on my door. If you, you know, want to come in the middle of the night or whenever um, with something, and, okay, not a problem. So I never let anybody give me a problem. We just address what's happening. So that's, that's kind of my style, I guess. Um, so, um, here's what I wrote. 
What comes to mind when I reflect on the past 50 or so years of practice at the Berkeley Zen Center is deep gratitude. First and foremost for my late teacher, Shinryu Suzuki, Suzuki Roshi, uh, what we thought were our limit, um, oh yeah, his gentle but firm and nourishing example encouraged us, his disciples, to go beyond what we thought were our limitations. He said once to us, I have nothing to offer you but my Zen spirit. He always taught by example. He had thoroughly digested the essence of Dogen's teaching and could express it in his own authentic way to make it accessible to our generation. He was totally grounded in a way and what he taught was, was <clears throat> selflessness, not acting from our ego, integrity, truthfulness, no arrogance, shikantaza, just doing, meeting each person right where they are, <clears throat> with full attention. The world stops here before going on and continuing to live our lives one moment at a time. He taught us the nature of determination and steadfastness. Sit still and don't give up. And, at the, and the nature of compassion. If you need to change your position, you can do so without judgment. When we can accept ourselves just as we are, both good and bad, it makes it possible to identify with others and support them. One time I told Suzuki Roshi how bad I was. And he said, oh, that was good. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be harder to know how to help others. He taught us what, <clears throat> what he knew, the Japanese style. His intention was not to turn us into Japanese, but to offer what he felt was the highest virtue of his culture. He didn't have to tell us what it was. We could practice to find out for ourselves. He loved his American students because of our open-mindedness and willingness to adventure wholeheartedly into a totally foreign world. One of our virtues as Americans is our openness to accept the best that other cultures have to offer. That it may... Uh, <clears throat> that it makes America great again, again. <laughs> Suzuki was not attached to, to Buddhism or the Soto school. That does not mean that he rejected it. His teaching of non-attachment was based on not, was, was not based on rejection but on great respect for things. In a world of constant transformations, to show the respect for things, to show respect for things, and to cling to nothing. Back in the 60s, before his students were ordained, we recited the robe chant in the morning, following Zazen, but we didn't know what it meant because it was in Japanese. Um, so his teaching of non-attachment was not based on rejection, but on great respect for things in a world of constant transformations. To, sh uh, to, show how, uh, to show respect for things and cling to nothing. Back in the 60s, before his students were ordained, 
we recited the rope chant in the morning following Zazen. But we didn't know what it meant because it was in Japanese. So one day, he and Katagiri sensei were in the, his office, and I asked him about the meaning of the chant. Katagiri started shuffling through the desk to see what he could find, and Suzuki Roshi stopped him and pointed to his heart and said, Love. <clears throat> Back in the 60s, before his Back in the 60s, before his students were ordained, we recited the ro oh, I read that. Sorry. <laughs> My eyes sometimes go like this. I also wish to express my gratitude to the... I also want to express gratitude uh, to the Japanese priests who were drawn to Suzuki Roshi and our practice. Then came Ko hmm. Katagiri. Uh, so there was Katagiri Roshi who came in '63, the year before me together with Suzuki Roshi. I'm sorry, it's a strange language. Katagiri Roshi came in 63, the year before me, together with Suzuki Roshi, modeled the practice. Then came Kobanchino Roshi, the mystic, and then Yoshimura Sensei, the friend. Uh, these are my nicknames for them. Uh, then when Suzuki was too ill to come to Tasahara in 1970, Tatsukami Roshi was invited to lead, the, uh, to lead and develop the monastic style. And I was the Shuso, or the head monk, uh, for the practice period. When we opened the Zendo on Dwight Way, now we got to Berkeley. When, when we opened the Zendo on Dwight Way in Berkeley on February 1st, 67, I had thought of our practice as a grassroots endeavor. Served him and uh, as, I had thought of our practice as a grassroots endeavor served and maintained by the members. We had morning and evening zazen based on the San Francisco Zen Center model. Our first major work project was to refinish the splintery floor of Dwight Way. I'm still over there. Uh, to refinish the splintery floor of the attic on Dwight Way and to make a zendo. And it was a wonderful zendo. Many of you are still here who were there then. Um, we moved to Russell Street and the real work began. What is now the Berkeley Zendo were two apartments, this one and that one. Huh. What now is the Berkeley Zendo were two apartments set side by side, which were completely remodeled and rebuilt. The effort of both men and women Sangha members and carpenters. When there is a need at Zen Center to build something, to build something in a Japanese style, carpenters appear from out of the woodwork. <laughs> uh, we raised the two-story house next to the Zendo, where my office is, and built the, fr built the ground floor under it. To me, it, it felt like a bit of a community barn raising on a grand scale. Scale. When I look back at all the dedicated work and contributions of our members that went into this entire building project over a two-year period, I am totally overwhelmed with gratitude. I doubt that we could do something like this today. 
all the conditions were in, al in alignment, including my own naivety that we could do such a thing. Very true. And last but not least, I wish to extend my gratitude to all of you, students, members, who have passed through this Buddha hall and contributed time, effort, and financial support, and to everyone who has ever been a donor, a board member, uh, a cook, a gardener, a resident, a president, a treasurer, a librarian, um, coordinator, Tenzo, dishwasher, bathroom cleaner, office manager, work, uh, work leader, Sashin director, member of a committee, or general labor. There is much more that, that, that can be said, but for now, please know that I honor and respect all that you do, have done, and hopefully will do to keep it all together and continue. I probably left some good things out, but uh, that's my humble offering. Um, and I uh, hope to, to practice with you as long as the law allows. <laughs> Thank you, Sojin, for that. Thank, thank you, Sojin, for your sincere and warm-hearted talk. You have to speak louder because one of my hearing aids is not working. Well, I'm thanking you for your heartwarming and sincere talk. And and now we're going to hear you. from your invited guests who are offering statements on this occasion. The first speaker is Yomitsu Suzuki Roshi, the person from whom Suzuki is up on the computer. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So Hoitsu Suzuki Roshi was the person from whom Sojin Roshi received Dharma transmission. And who is abbot of Rinzo Inn. Japan. Our longtime friend Yoshi Akiba will be the translator for our first two speakers. おめでとうございます。あ、長い間仏法を守ってこられました。あ、これからもまだまだまだすることはたくさんありますから。あ、体気をつけてやっていただきたい。当時の総順老師 Congratulations and omezitozaimasu. Thank you so much for all your work. It has been great. And, and uh, please continue because you still have a long time to go. So <laughs> take care of yourself. Uh,六十年前ぐらいに鈴木春龍から鈴木老師から座禅を教わった手を取って北海上院をこれを教えていただいたでしょうこの北海上院を一生かけて今までもこれからもずっといや座禅が続く限りこの北海上院が続けられますように
60 years ago, I was taught by Suzuki Roshi how to do Hokkaido. Meru-san was. Ah, Meru-san <laughs> was. I sorry, excuse me, Meru-san. Right. So, in the how to do Hokkaido join, and uh, I will remember forever how to do that. <laughs> so, 60 years yeah. ago, um, well, uh, uh, Sojun Roshi was taught by lecture by Suzuki Roshi how to shit and also do the Hokkai drawing. And I hope that you continue doing the Hokkai drawing and then uh, for the long time. The way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And now we will Mother, uh, a little bit more. No, 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 just look at that. Hey. Tojin Roshi wa 93歳 desu ka? 95歳. Are you are uh, now uh, 92 or 90 Five. Oh, how old are you? Oh, are you? Ninety-one. 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 I'm one. 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 I'm Nine? 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 Oh, you just one year. Do I get a chance to say something? You may at any time. Huh? You can at any time. Uh, Where can I, 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 I get? You can just speak. Just you can just speak. Just speak. Okay. Konai da. Yabushima ya ikimashita ne. You went to Yabushima last time? Did you go to Yabushima? Yakushima. Yakushima? Yeah. Yakushima? Did you go? Yeah. Island. Island. Yeah. Yakushima Island. <laughs> you went. Yakushima. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So we still have unfinished yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. We still have unfinished Zazen no hanashi wa jenze mattaku shimasen de shita ne. We we didn't do anything. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you walk? Yes. We yes. Just, uh, you climb the mountain? Climb the mountain. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, but we still have unfinished business. You we haven't had unfinished business. We still have it. Yeah. We need to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 はい。だから昔の人は昔の人は生まれ変わっても you are born and you will die. I mean, born and born. Still, you have to continue to sit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if your mother can take it. Uh, if, you can, if you can take it. Kono, kono, uh, corona no arashi ga sundara mata, uh, oai shimasu. Uh, when the corona is over, this is a terrible time. But let's see again. Let's do it again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Congratulations. Yeah. 
あお招きいただいてありがとうございました。Thank you so much. 本当にありがとうございました。はい。Thank you so much. I really appreciate. ありがとうございました。<笑>どう、You are welcome. <笑>どっちに言ってんのかしら。<笑><笑>どういたしますよ。<笑>さあ、よ。はい。はい。終わりましょう。私は。はい。はい。はいはいありがとうございました。Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for that wonderful talk and exchange. We're now going to hear from Gengo Akiba Roshi, the Bishop of Soto Zen in North America. Yeah,、uh, before I'm going to read what Gengo san says,、okay. I like to share short. A story. When I was a student at UC Berkeley, I used to、uh, go to Mel White,、uh, uh, Mel White Men Sons attic to sit. That、mm-hmm. time, only one student was sitting with, with you, and I joined you at five o'clock every morning. Yeah, and、uh, you are really. You are being, I think, a taxi driver and helping many <laughs> places.、Uh, and、uh, I was really、uh, impressed by your sitting at five o'clock, even you are、uh, working and you are sitting. And the three of us sat for a long time.、Yeah, I was going to school then. And uh, uh, I remember. You are being very、uh, helpful. You helped many small、uh, service、uh, centers. I remember wh- which one, I don't remember, but、uh, you are really, even that, then, you are very helpful. You are always caring for other people. And、uh, I was really impressed. And、uh, your gentleness, you really touched me. So I decided to go t- into Zen, and、uh, I, I myself. Want to serve other people like you. You inspired me so many ways. Thank you so much.、はい、<laughs> so, uh, uh, Mel Sojun Whiteman Rosh, uh, Yak Yonju Nen no Ida, uh, Barclay Zen Center, Shonga Kujo, uh, Shusai Sarete, Shido Sarete Kimashita. 鈴木老師に直接指示した人々の中で堅実に全センターを守り多くのメンバーと共に仏道を指し示し歩み全コミュニティを維持し地域社会に根付かせてきた数少ない老師の一人であります。総順名を老師老師はずみん、リーディング・エンド・ティーチング・バークリー・ゼン・センター、小学時、for more than 40 years。Among many people who directly studied under Shunru Suzuki 老師、He is one of the few 老師 who kept study, study practice at Zen Center, worked Buddha's way with many members. Nurtured the Zen community and established a root in local community of Berkeley. 1988年から1998年の10年間の間、サンフランシスコ全センター発信時のアボットを務めています。パサハラの毎年冬と春のインテンシブプ,ロプラクティスピリオドの指導役も定期的に務めてきています。鈴木老師の気づかれたサンガとその教えを忠実に守り、えー、伝え、広める精進をされてきました。You also served as a b o t at San Francisco Zen Center for 10 years from 1988 to 1998. He has been Regular teaching at Tasara during winter and spring intensive practice period every year. So, Jun Roshi,、uh, you are faithfully kept the teaching and Sangha Suzuki Roshi established and strive to pass and sp- spread his teachings. So, no, I'm 
草潤同士は北アメリカの総当然の源流である日本の総当然をこの地に移入される作業にも積極的でありました。ことに道元禅寺の禅を探求したと言われている西有牧山禅寺の消防現像経的の英訳事業に参加されたことは大きな意味があると思います。In the meantime, 総人老師 took on a very active role in transferring Soto Zen from Japan, lineage of Soto Zen in North America, especially his Your significant contribution was in translation of Shobo Genzo Keiteki, written by Nishiari Bokuzen Zenji, who deeply researched Dogen Zenji's Zen. この北アメリカの地には500以上の Zen Center. 800人以上の僧侶が生まれていますその総当然のコミュニティが健全に育っていくようにとの趣旨で包括団体を組織していますそのアメリカ総当然ブディストアソシエーションの諸活動にも総順同士は参加され多くの貢献をされてくれました In this land of North America now we have about 500 Zen centers and 800 monks and nuns. American Soto Zen Association is originated to further a healthy growth of Zen community, and the Sojun Roshi has been participating and contributing to many activities of the association. 私は1983年、笠原でのプラクティスピリオドに参加しました。そこで、草潤の師と出会っています。37年の間、草潤の師は私を温かく見守ってくれていたと感じております。Looking back my personal memory, I met 草潤の師 for the first time in 1983. When I participated in a practice period in Tassahara for 37 years, I feel like Sojun Roshi has been watching over me very warmly. Sojun Roshi が Berkeley Zen Center 小学寺の住職からステップダウンをするとの知らせがあったとき、私は中国唐の時代のある禅のエピソードを思い、When I heard the news that Sojun Roshi is stepping down from the abbot of Berkeley Zen Center, Shogakuji, one of the old Zen episodes from the Tang Dynasty in China came to my mind. The episode goes like this. The episode goes like this. わしが死んだら近くのメンバーの家に一等の水耕乳になって生まれるそしてその牛の左の脇の下に遺産の僧霊友という五文字を書いておくこの時あなたたちはこの牛を何と呼ぶかもし遺産の僧といえばそれは水耕乳だ水耕乳と呼べばそれは遺産の僧霊友だまあ言うてみよう一体何と呼べばよいかその時皇帝の行さんがみんなの中から出て来兵を,来兵をして出て行きました行さんは後に遺産の跡継ぎになりますというエピソードです One day 遺産でいう禅寺 told his disciples When I die I will be reborn as 水耕牛 A water cow in one of the members' house in the neighborhood. I will engrave five characters. Issan no so reyu, monk reyu of Issan, under the left armpit of water cow, 
And then, what do you call this water cow? If you call it monk of Issan, it is water cow. If you call it water cow, and then it is monk value of Issan. Now, say it. What should you call it? Call it? Uh, at, at the moment of senior disciple, Gyo san stepped, uh, stepped up from the crowd, bowed, and walked away. Later on, Gyo san became the successor of Is san. That is the episode. Then, no shinyo wa sne ni ima koko jiko o kihon ni okimas. Beginner's mind, then mind no kuni, tsunareru mundai des, tsunareru mundai des. Kono jiko to a dareka, nanimono nanka, ni mezameru kotonga juyo de artono, kono episodo a sashi shimeste ilno de show. The basis of Zen's shugyo training is always in right now, right here, oneself. This is a question that these two the phrase beginners of mind then mind who is this oneself i think this episode reminds us that important things is to become aware of who you are meru sojun wise man roshi wa 40 nen ijou ni wataru nagai aida suzuki roshi ga kizuki okareta そう、小学寺の書籍に小学の僧、僧順と刻み続けてこられたのでしょう。To me, it seems like Shōjun male white man, Roshi, has been engraving monk Shōjun of Shōgaku on the foundation stone of Shōgakuji that was placed by Suzuki Roshi for the long time in the past 40 years. So, the engravement is completed. That is what I feel. So, the engravement is completed. That is what I feel. And now the question is, what should we call this engravement, Mount Shouzen or Shogaku, on the foundation stone of Berkeley Zen Center? Buddha was in the middle of the road, the the Buddha said, should walk way of teaching alone, like uh, rhinoceros, rhinoceros home. I will call this engravement. 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 I will call this よき後継者を得ておりました。総順の氏おめでとうを申し上げます。I will call this engravement monk Sojun of Shogaku on the foundation stone rhinoceros rhinoceros horn of Berkeley. Fortunately, today we share this moment with the monk who will continue the service at the Berkeley Zen Center. I congratulate Sojun Roshi for gaining such great successor. So, the last thing is, Sojun Roshi, long time ago, thank you so much. I thank you for the support of the American Zen Center. I thank you for the support of the American End my statement. I would like to say, Gokuro Sama Deshita. Thank you for your hard work for such a long time. I deeply thank you for your many contributions to Soto Zen 
in North America. 今後は、総額の総、総順の文字を人は何と読むか、ゆっくりと楽しんで仕送,され仕送,り,仕送りされることを祈ります。From now on, I wish you have a slow and pleasant life, enjoying what people will call the engravement, monk, sojourn of s h o g a k ありがとうございます。サンキューさん。ありがとう。Thanks to both of you. We would like to ask the remaining speakers to keep their statements brief. We'll now hear from Tenshin Reb Anderson Roshi. He shared the Abbacy of San Francisco Zen Center with Sojin Roshi for many years. And like Sojin Roshi, he's been living descendant of Shunryu Suzuki Roshi. He is currently a senior teacher, Dharma teacher, at San Francisco Zen Center. Can you hear me? Reb, do you want to start talking, please? I will start talking. <laughs> up, up, up. <laughs> Should I wait for the video or just talk? I can hear you. Okay. I, you can hear me and I can see you. Oh, that's good enough. Yeah. Sojin Roshi, I've been asked to speak briefly, and I will do so. We met at Tassahari more than 52 years ago. In my memory, 52 years ago, in my memory, You had a goatee and a French beret. <laughs> and I had a bushy mustache. <laughs> and we, you and I, washed dishes together. <laughs> and since that time, 52 years ago, you and I. Together with the great Sangha, have eaten Zen Center's rice and washed Zen Center's dishes. <laughs> During our first practice period, Suzuki Roshi was supposed to come down, but he couldn't. Because the road was washed out. Our first practice period in 1969, January. And the road was washed out because of great continuous rain. So, after we ran out of various provisions, the leaders of Tassahara 
asked you and me to hike out of the valley to get some provisions for the Sangha. So we did. You and I trudged through the deep mountain snows together to get provisions for the Sangha. On the way back, we crossed roaring rivers and we almost it got swept away. It was so dangerous, but we survived. Through our long journey together from that time up till now, you have always been a true friend and teacher. Now, I join the chorus of this great assembly in expressing our boundless gratitude to you for your great and unceasing care of the Berkeley Zen Center, of the San Francisco Zen Center, Tassajara, City Center, and Green Gulch. and for your care of all living beings. Now, as you step down from your seat as abbot, your life and practice will continue to inspire us on our practice of the Buddha way. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So you much. Thank you, Tenshin Roshi. Leslie James, the abiding teacher at Tassajara, will speak next, representing the San Francisco Zen Center Sangha. Hello, Mel. Can you hear me? I can. I can see you, too. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you, too, and you look great, too. <laughs> I'm so happy to be able to represent San Francisco Zen Center in thanking you for everything you've done for us over these hundreds of years, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always, or I sometimes thought of you as somewhere out when you weren't right here with us. I thought of you on some other planet called Berkeley Zen Center, where you were sort of safely out of the pull, the gravity field of San Francisco Zen Center, and where you could be not pulled around by all the stuff that was going on here. Of course, I heard in your talk today that you didn't get pulled around by them either. <laughs> but my feeling was that you were over there safe and secure with them and able to look at us and notice whether we were following Suzuki Roshi's way and whether we needed your help, either individuals or the institution. And then when we did, you would fly over to us and help us. <laughs> of course, the biggest time was, as you said, when you were Abbott, co-Abbott for nine years. And uh, that was a pretty, uh, intense time at Zen Center. Um, I think when you came, it really helped us or made possible manifesting uh, a new realization that there wasn't just one teacher, there were many teachers. And we'd been saying it for a while, but when you joined Reb as the abbot, it really made that real in a, in a real way. And I don't think, I think Zen Center is a very different place today because of that. Also, I happen to be president for a good part of your uh, abbacy, and I was often in meetings with a lot of people with strong opinions and strong feelings about things, and they would get sort of up more and more upset, and then you would walk into the room. This is my experience, sometimes at least. You would walk into the room, and suddenly they would be calm. I don't know what you did to them, but I think... <laughs> 
I think there was something about they felt respected and heard and loved by you. I don't think that you and I have any unfinished business, as far as I know. I feel like it's been a blessing, a total blessing, to have lived and worked with you as much as I have. And uh, I think, I don't know how Zen Center would have, San Francisco Zen Center would have survived without you. So thank you very, very much and all my love. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leslie. Three of Sojin Roshi's Deshi, that is Dharma transmitted disciples, will speak next. First, Gogetsu Norman Fisher, founder of Everyday Zen Foundation. Life giving hands. To sit every morning and evening, chant, take care of the place, life-giving hands, to plant a garden, they put, tend it, life-giving hands, to establish the place, build it out, sit every morning and evening, chant, take care of the place, Life giving hands. Life giving hands. Decades slide by like no time at all. One, two, three, four, five. Small numbers. The past, the present, the future, the moment of Zazen. Unshakable faith in the practice, without fanfare, just to sit every morning and evening, chant, tend to the place, tend to the people, life-giving hands. The garden has flourished. So many kinds of plants, such wide, permissiveness, such gentle rain, such love. And far and wide across the land, seeds are sprouting, plants are growing, life giving hands. On behalf of Kathy and myself, and so many others whose lives have been made green by your hands. The Everyday Zen Sangha, our Sanghas in the Pacific Northwest, the Bay Area and elsewhere, all of us together offer a thousand thousand bows in gratitude for your life-giving hands. Dear Sojin, your teacher, oldest friend, great gardener, music maker. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now, Josho. Pat Phelan, who is the abbess of Chapel Hill Zen Center, will speak. Good afternoon. I met Mel uh, when I first practiced at Tassajara, where he was director in 1972 and 73. But I didn't get to know you as a teacher until 1988 when you became co-abbot of the San Francisco Zen Center. And at the San Francisco Zen Center, I felt like uh, 
a couple teachers were charismatic. <laughs> and I came to see this as arising from insecurity based on a need to give the impression of being enlightened or higher than others. Whereas Sojin Roshi seemed to be an ordinary person who valued practice over spiritual status. He was very ordinary <laughs> in the sense that he sat Zazen with us, he ate with us, he let us join him in taking walks and so on. He allowed us into his life as it was. No special clubs or cars. He was ordinary and manifested ordinary mind is the way. The mind that's accessible when our body, mind, and activity are unified. Allowing practice to manifest wherever he was. When I moved to North Carolina to lead the Chapel Hill Zen group, Sojin Roshi visited eight months later and stayed for a week while we worked together choosing names for Jukai. And he led our first Jukai here and continued visiting our Sangha about once a year through 2015, five years ago. <laughs> and in addition to teaching Buddhism and how to practice Zen, he educated our group in how to be a Zen center. He explained how we were connected to the San Francisco Zen Center and Suzuki Roshi's way of practice. He also helped teach the board their responsibilities, as well as how to have a teacher. And I know the Chapel Hill Zen Center wouldn't be what it is today without Sojin Roshi's support and example over these many years. Sojin Roshi, I feel such deep, deep gratitude, endless gratitude beyond words to you for your example, your practice, teaching, and leadership. For me, you embody the true person of no rank. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua Pat, Elin. Zenki Mary Mosin, Abbess of Clearwater Zendel, will now speak. trying to get this thing out of the middle of my screen here. Well, I am reminded of a, a, a song, the Hotel California, to paraphrase it a little bit. You can step down but you can never leave because <laughs> you're you're right here you are the i forget your title now the founding senior dharma teacher or something like whatever it is you are our teacher you continue to be our teacher i hope you're around for a long time And you're, you're here. So many of the folks that I know that practiced at, uh, at uh, Dwight Way say, well, he was just, he was just there, you know, in the garden and the Zendo, and he was there. And I'm thinking, yes, that I would say you're here. You're here, you're here with us all the time. And it's that here-ness 
that speaks to me. And what I was remembering is when you do an ordination, um, you give an okesa, you give or yoki bowls, whatever, and you give it. And I remember whatever I received first. I don't remember probably, I mean, if it, say, the, say my okesa or my karoma maybe. Anyway, I just remember I had my hands out and plop, <laughs> you, know, you, you didn't throw it at me. It wasn't hard, but it was definite. You were giving it, it was, it was serious, it was serious. It meant something, and you you showed that. It was partly your heart, but it was also your intention. And you were saying, what it said to me was, I mean it. Do you mean it? And I took it, and I meant it. And that, that gesture, without words, says to me, your wholehearted practice and your hearness. And I am eternally grateful. May we walk together forever. Thank you for walking with me and with us for so long. Thank you very much. Speaking for the Berkeley Zen Center Sangha is longtime Sangha member and practitioner, Hosho Karen Sundheim. So Jim, Mel, I could spend hours talking about how you created, inspired, and sustained the Berkeley Zen Center but I only have time to mention a few points, um, some of which have been mentioned already. What first struck me is that you were not the kind of teacher who was focused on your own charisma. <laughs> that actually you didn't want fame or you didn't want to, uh, you didn't seem to be want, want to be known far and wide. You are a stay-at-home kind of teacher. You are here with us six days a week, often twice a day, every morning for Zazen, every afternoon. You were there for Dokusan every morning, several afternoons, Saturdays, sometimes Sundays. Um, my experience of you is being steady, ordinary, fatherly, practical, and loving. The fact that we were welcome to knock on your door was astonishing to me. It took me a long time to actually bring myself to do it because I couldn't believe you were as accessible as you were. We ate breakfast together every Saturday in the Zendo, and I know you never wanted to miss a meal <laughs> in our cooking. And as a sashim cook, each one of us sashim cooks would report to you, would, would knock on your door after each meal, and we would discuss each dish of each meal. And you would give us our feedback. In fact, one thing that you talked about a lot, you discouraged people who made complicated dishes. You wanted us to bring out flavor through simplicity. And so a couple times you said during sashim, put me in the kitchen. I'm gonna work in the kitchen during sashim. You gave us instructions. And what I remember most is the pink bean soup that you made which consisted only of pink beans, cumin, and salt. And it was so delicious. And onion, onion. 
because you've taught us to caramelize the onions for a long time for sweetness. So we learned to cook with you. And that was just another aspect of how much you were involved in teaching through practice and through being a model. I came in October of 1976 to the Dwight Way attic and um, I was 21, and now I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> a really long time. And um, I remember when we first had Dokus on, it was a few years later, and I told you I couldn't get up at five o'clock in the morning. And you, and I said, because I couldn't have coffee and I would fall asleep. And you said, come and fall asleep. And I would say, I can't come and fall asleep. I have to do zazen. But you insisted that I come and sleep. And I thought that was kind of silly, but after a long while, I realized what you were doing, which was creating sangha. So I think that's just one of the most amazing achievements a strong, Sangha we have here at the Berkeley Zen Center. We have people who've been here for 45 years. We have people who've been here for 20 or 30. We have a whole new group of people, some of them quite young, who have come and joined us even during the pandemic. And I really think that's to your credit, how much you've encouraged people and one final thing is I remember when I was Shuso in 2006, I was very afraid of public speaking. And I was saying, well, I don't know if I'm smart enough, wise enough to get up there in public. And you said, no, all you want to do when you speak is encourage people to practice. That's all you do. And so I want to thank you for 44 years of encouragement. And what I see of you in all our Sangha members, their deep practice, devotion, and uh, we always carry on. And thank you for everything. Thank you, Karen. Our next speaker is Sojin Roshi's wife. Venus Horowitz. Mel, it has been an honor to be at your side for nearly 50 years as you established and nurtured this wonderful saga, your life's work. You thought that with me, you had a partner in formal Zendo practice, as well as a life partner. Then after five years of intensive Zen practice, I stopped going to the Zendo. That was a great disappointment to you, but you accepted my choice and stood by me. Then, in 1987, I wanted to raise our son, Daniel, in a different neighborhood, and we moved away from the Zen Center. It was another disappointment for you, and again, you stood by me and Daniel. I think you always felt the Zen Center was still your true home, and I appreciated your commitment to your family as well as to your Sangha. I have always had deep respect for your commitment to practicing and teaching Suzuki Roshi's way. And I have done my best to support you in that role, even when I was not practicing with you in the Zendo. In turn, I have been rewarded with the warmth and support of the Zen community that feels like family to me. I will continue to support you in your role as founding Dharma teacher. 
And with the support of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, I will be at your side, meeting the challenges of the next stage of your life. I'm confident that this wonderful practice place and Sangha, your life's work and a great achievement, will continue to thrive after you step down and for a long time into the future. I just want to say that um, uh, Liz, or you, <laughs> um, uh, have, has, have always kept me on track. <laughs> when people say, you're just plain Jane, that's because of you. <laughs> you will not let me get away with anything. Thanks to you, Liz and Sojin. Our last speaker is Vice Abbot of Berkeley Zen Center and a senior Deshi disciple of Sojin Roshi's. Host on, Alan Sanaki. Good afternoon. Hello over there. No, you're here. Oh. <laughs> I'm over there. Hello over there. Now I'm talking to myself. I, I only have about eight or ten thousand words to, to read, so I won't take more than 45 minutes. Um, before I read a poem, I just, I really want to thank Steve Weintraub, who has uh, been the director of this ceremony, and it's been, it's been a wonderful thing to be able to work with you, and to see how harmoniously, you see the example of how harmoniously you and Sojin work together, Stephen. Uh, it's, it's a real example, and it's an example of Suzuki Roshi's practice, which both you and Soji shared. Thank you. Thank you. So here's a poem from my old teacher. For 53 years, the white dragon has prowled the slopes of Old Plum Mountain. Some trees here and there bear scorch marks from his fiery breath. But students who come and go are warmed and comforted, bathed in his pure gaze. The fire in Sojin's belly may not always burn as hot as it once did, or at any moment the embers might flare up bright and hot. The fire remains. But as Suzuki, as, Sojin, as Suzuki Roshi told Sojin, just being alive is enough. We have counted on him for so long. Now, on our own two feet, the young dragons, uh, comparatively speaking, <laughs> must climb the steep hillside together to care for all beings and even the mountain itself. What I really appreciate from you is that you have, and you've built this community. And you didn't do it, as you said, you didn't, it's not like you did something special. You were, you were just there, and there's something remarkable about your energy that just allows things to constellate and to release our energy to make things happen. Even, not even with, with direction. It's just, this is what we see. My sense from not, not having met Suzuki Roshi is that he had the same mysterious quality. So walking all my life, I've been looking for community and I've had many, I still have many communities of friends, communities of activists, communities of writers, communities of musicians. But when I walked in here in the early 1980s, I had this peculiar sense that I was home. And I asked myself, well, how do you know that? 
what makes you think that? And I say, I don't know, but I am. And that was even before I met you. That was actually, you were in Japan. And I was just seeing the effect. And I was just seeing the people. And some of them are still here physically. Some of them are still in, present in our Sangha. I want to also really acknowledge Liz, who has been, uh, when, when I moved in, you and Daniel and Mel were living there. And it's like, oh, a family could live here. This is very ordinary. You know, and I love the voices of children. I've heard, you know, Daniel and Grace, and then my children, and now the children who live next door. And a lot of people don't know, but Liz has come to, every, Liz is a member of our resident community. Even though you moved in 1987, you're grandmother again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and she comes to every resident meeting and cooks because she's part of the community. And the community is what it's all about to me. If someone asked me, what's the essence of your teaching, Sojin? I would say, it's not to abandon anyone, but to create a space for them so they can practice this simple, straightforward way, so that they can be home, despite whatever difficulties are going on in any of our lives, and so that they can settle themselves. And this is, I think, the legacy that you pass on to your, your students. And I, I hope that we are up to the task of continuing that. But actually, I don't have a lot of doubt about that. I think you planted the seed really, really deeply. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Do you, would you like to say anything in, in closing? Well, I also would like to thank Steve for his um, uh, um, his way of blending in and uh, taking the lead uh, and um, uh, everyone feels like they like to follow him. <laughs> So, uh, no coercions, uh, and I, I really do feel, I, I, I have so much appreciation for what everybody said, it's, it's kind of overwhelming, and um, I would like to have a, uh, a uh, copy, if possible, in print, or somehow, of the statements. I could not understand all of them. We can do that. Yeah. And so thanks for sitting so patiently through all of this. <laughs> it was easy for me. You know, <laughs> but, but, well, yeah, because I'm a, the subject. But um, please stand up and Deep, and, and give a deep sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs>
Sekunde. I think so. Thank you for participating in today's ceremony. If you would like to send your appreciation to Sojin Hoshi, we will post a slide that will have both his email address and his mail, email and mailing address. And before we leave, there are a few people we want to thank that really made this possible today. First, our tech support team, John Voss in North Carolina, Rob Lyons, Rogoff Banloff, Ed Herzog, Yoni Ackerman, Blake Tolbert, Ross Blum, Dean Bradley. And the planning team, Lori Sanaki, Mary Durier, Alan Sanaki, our ceremonial participants, Kika Helene, Susan Marvin, flower arrangements for the Zendo, Barbara Strauss. Please take good care of yourselves. Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs>